Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. The 2013 State of the Island Economic Summit took place here at the Vancouver Island Conference Center October 29th and 30th. We have a few select highlights for you today. A bicycle ride from coast to coast, family fitness from the running room and the pros and cons of loosening BC liquor laws. That and more in the next 30 minutes. You are watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. The 7th Annual State of the Island Economic Summit is an annual gathering of businesses and organizations. Uh, they come together to share, to get ideas, to look ahead to the future where there are opportunities and to continue to build relationships in business for a positive economic outlook here on Vancouver Island. There are too many breakout sessions to list. I would say 20 to 30, perhaps even more. Today on Go Island, we've selected selected three that think fit with what we do here on the channel on a regular basis. We're going to look into how nonprofits benefit the business community. Where would we be without them? We're going to talk about the health of the film industry and then we're going to wrap it all up with how businesses and the role that they have in keeping their workforce healthy. That's a whole big nutshell. We'll get into that in the course of the next 30 minutes. But we're starting off with a couple of guys who took an amazing ride across the country by bicycle. They did it for a good cause, raising more than $22,000 for the BC Children's Hospital, experiencing all that Canada has to offer along the way. Here's Derek Johnstone. Beautiful images, a trip across Canada by bicycle. You're watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. Signe Madden is the executive director at the United Way based here in Nanaimo. Central and northern Vancouver Central Island. Central and northern Vancouver yep. Island. Yep. We're talking about the role that nonprofits play mm -hmm. in our economy and how it's probably generally underestimated. That's right. So this is an economic development summit and we were running a session today to talk about the number of people. It's a huge uh, portion of the workforce. 6.6% is working in the nonprofit sector. Wow. Massive amount of uh, funds generated and managed through the nonprofit sector. They're talking about 11 billion plus a year. Uh, and these are not McJobs. People who work in the nonprofit sector are educated. You know, they're working full-time, part-time jobs, but they own houses. I mean, they're doing all the tax paying and contributing to the economy. So mm -hmm. today we were talking about, you know, why, do, why doesn't the general public really understand the size of the nonprofit sector and its role in the economy? and how we are an economic driver unto, our, uh, unto itself. And I know we don't have a lot of time, but why yeah. do you think that is? I think it's, uh, we haven't had one single voice, and I think a lot of the amazing projects that are, uh, that are driving our uh, tourism and economy are coming out of nonprofits, and we're not telling our story very well. So the Kinsel Trestle, the, uh, the aquarium in, in Ukluluk, those are big bonuses to those communities and their economy, and it's nonprofit leadership married with uh, you know the government sector that are, are creating those incredible projects but we're not saying hey look at us we're you know great employers we have educated workforce and we're investing you know at the United Way we raise a million dollars in Central Island in 10 12 weeks that is invested back into other programs that that help the economy so you know I, I don't think we do a good enough uh, job telling our story. Do you think that's changing? Sort of the level of respect and and the the standing up and sharing. Yeah, there's a couple of yeah, there's a couple of interesting studies that are coming out, and I think we have to uh, profile those. Uh, Social Planning Research Council in uh, BC is uh, talking to uh, nonprofits all across the province and getting them to say how many people work there, what's your economic spin-off, and those studies I think will, if we highlight those and say, okay, here's what we mean in the economy, and here's how we are a key player, and uh, you know, yeah. please invest in your nonprofit because you look at the you know several million hours of volunteer time that the nonprofits manage a year. That's not even dollars. That's just Man running hours. your hospices, doing all that uh, amazing yeah. work in the schools. Uh, so we're a big value to the economy. Thanks, Sydney. I try to Thank imagine you. what would happen if you were to take the nonprofits out of the economy and the volunteers and the staff. What would happen? I think it would be absolutely devastating. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with more on Go Island. Still to come today on GO, encouraging families to stay active together and reforming BC liquor laws. That and more still to come today on GO.
know that although we associate roundabouts with places from the past, maybe in England or uh, Scotland, roundabouts are actually experiencing a resurgence. They're, they've been found to be more environmentally friendly, safer, and the solution that we're looking to first. Um, it, people don't have to stop when they go through roundabouts, and they're safer for pedestrians, cyclists, and vehicles. This is an example in Qualicum Beach where we've had great success with a roundabout. You're watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. We're enjoying all of the networking and there is a lot of it taking place here at the 7th Annual State of the Island Economic Summit taking place at the Vancouver Island Conference Center October 29th and 30th. Kelly Robinson is behind the camera today. Hi Kelly. And it's no secret that she loves animals and has a soft spot for those who are in need of a good home. She's now helping to find a home for this little guy. Thanks Kate. We're here at the Parksville Qualicum SPCA. I'm here with a longtime volunteer Sabrina. She's going to tell us about Barney. What can Barney's, you tell us? Barney's a four-year-old stray. Uh, he came to us with quite a wound on the left side of his neck which has completely healed. He was a little bit scruffy looking, but as you can see, he loves to be cuddled and touched. He definitely and is an affectionate guy. He's a very affectionate guy, and he loves all people, including children. Well, if you have room in your house for Barney and you're looking for a lot of love, because he definitely has a lot to give, come and meet him at the Parksville Qualcomm SPCA. I don't know how Kelly does it and doesn't go home with a new pet every time she visits the SPCA. We do know that she has a few dogs and a cat or two and it's hard to keep up, but I think she's resisting. We're going to throw things over now to James Green. It's safe to say that the running room is a huge success story, not only on Vancouver Island, but in North America as well. It was founded by John Stanton and they are now launching a family fitness publication. James Green looks into that in Victoria. I've incorporated running into my life recently. It's great, not just for the physical benefits, but the mental as well. You're watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. Don Enright is an Emmy award-winning producer based now in Victoria. In Victoria since 2006. And what have you observed about the film industry here on Vancouver Island? The film industry on Vancouver Island is a very interesting thing because it has, the, the island offers extraordinary locations, okay? Right. Um, but a really wide range of locations. It's not just Hatley Castle in Victoria or, or Avatar Grove, you know, in Mid Island, it's it's all kinds of useful locations that look like other places. Okay, right. so you can shoot if you're in Victoria, you can shoot downtown Los Angeles, you can shoot Venice, California, you can shoot New Jersey. Okay, I shot New Jersey, I, the whole movie, a whole New Jersey movie, I shot in Victoria, and the the New Jersey Film Commission called us up and said, where in Jersey did you shoot this movie? Wow. Okay. So it's, it's very varied, um, and it's, it's, that's very useful for production. It seems to be struggling. There always seems to be sort of cries for help and, and a sense of struggle. Why is that? I think part of that is the island mentality. I think part of it, that's, <laughs> it's, not, it's, that. it's not just the film business. I mean, everybody is always complaining on an island. Okay, okay. why don't you bring? Why isn't there a, I wish we had a... While we um, apologize in the process. But, right? but part, of, part of the problem in Victoria is, is the tax credit system. Um, which they changed in 2008. And Victoria no longer qualifies for the maximum tax credit. In fact, if you're in Vancouver, you can go to Langley, just make that little drive to Langley, and you'll get the same maximum credits that you, that, that you I'm sorry, you get the same credits as you do in Victoria. Okay? Right. Um, therefore, why would you come to Victoria? Is okay. that the biggest challenge? That, well, I mean, it you is, put that in is, place and everything's fixed? Um, um, I don't know if everything's fixed, but Victoria was well on its way to establishing an indigenous industry. It had more than two crews, somewhere between two and three crews, right. and it had regular activity. It had massive amounts of people who were living in Victoria and working on movies. And when I, living at when it. I first came up here in 2004, I mean, all my people were from Victoria. Okay, all the, the whole crew is Victoria. Very, very few people came from elsewhere. Now those people have had to go elsewhere in order to work. And, you know, friends of mine from Victoria are regularly going over to the, to the mainland and working in the mainland. Some of them have moved to other, other production right. locales, and some of them have moved out of the industry. Yeah. Becomes unsustainable. Becomes for, unsustainable, for and then they decide that they want to stay on the island more than they want to be in the film so business. So then they get out of the business. Right. Um, just quickly, I know we don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. There's changes coming. Uh, yeah. Next budget with the government. Well, 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 
hopefully, you know, the liberal platform included um, bumping the Victoria tax credit. I think that if they bump the Victoria tax credit, people will see as I did um, when I came up here in 2004 and then I moved here two years later, they'll see the possibilities on the island. Okay. Yeah. All right. A couple of messages there. One that's sticking for some reason. Stop complaining. Get her done. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with more on Go After This. You're watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. No matter what your discussion around business or what that business will be, you're not going to get very far if you're not healthy, if your workforce and the workforce isn't healthy. Shannon Marshall is the Director of Community Relations and Health Promotion for Island Health, and she's here to talk about the role that the workforce and business has in the health of our society. What is the link there? Well, it's, a, it's an important link. We have worked really hard to get health care onto the agenda of the business community so that they understand what that link is. We know that we have a rising burden of chronic disease, not just in our society, but globally. And those, the four big ones, diabetes, hypertension or high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, respiratory illnesses, and cancers, we know are largely preventable. So if we can work with the business community to help ensure that they have strategies that they can use in their workplaces to ensure the health of their workforce, then we can help to ease that burden um, on, on the workforce in the future. What are some of those strategies? I know that we don't personally at Shaw have a, a gym in place, but we have a cafe and that we've talked about having child minding come into our building yeah. because we have a lot of employees. What are some specific strategies that businesses can so look at? So does your employer offer you flu shots annually, for instance, to keep you healthy? Uh, I think there is some coming coming in next week. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm not because, sure. because I can actually get you one today, Katie. If you <laughs> care to roll up your sleeve, we can make sure that that happens. So that's one important strategy. Influenza is not a chronic illness, but there are other things that businesses can do. They can start by engaging in discussions with their workplace, their workforce rather, about strategies that are important to them and things that are important to them. So making sure that they're um, taking adequate breaks during the day, that they're getting some fresh air, that they're getting some walking breaks in. Physical and inactivity we know is one of the single biggest risk, fa risk factors for chronic disease. Um, smoking, so if they offer smoking cessation programs. Um, unhealthy diets, so making sure if there's a cafeteria that they're offered healthy food choices. And the harmful use of alcohol, so making sure that people are aware um, of any assistance that, that could be available to them, just as an example. Sounds like a real merging of sort of personal life choices in with your That's work right. life choices and what um, opportunities and resources are mm -hmm. there. We're very fortunate to live on Vancouver Island. It, not only is it one of the most fabulous places on earth, but we also um, are healthier in general than many of many other communities in Canada, and we do have um, healthier diets. But sadly, there are also things that we're not so good at. So, as an example, um, roughly one quarter of the people that live on the North Island are smoking, which contrasts to about 18% in South Island and 17% across BC. Uh, in some areas of the island we have higher incidences of overweight and obesity and that's one of the driving forces behind chronic diseases. We, we know that. We're going to throw things over now to Sean Leslie this week in BC. The topic, a lot of talk around the changing liquor laws in British Columbia. Here's where things are at now. That brings us to the end of this edition of Go Island. Shannon Marshall was very convincing, wouldn't take no for an answer. So here I am getting an unplanned and completely spontaneous flu shot. Uh, she's very good at her job. If you'd like more information on who qualifies and when, where and when clinics are, you can visit VancouverIslandHealthAuthority.ca. Thanks for watching this edition of Go Island. We'll see you next time. That wasn't so bad, not so bad at all. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Clothing supplied by Catwalk Fashions. Kate's hair and aesthetics provided by Matteo Salon.